saying that uh, this is a serious matter. Uh, I just spoke with President Obama just a few minutes ago, and he was calling to make sure that the federal authorities had done everything that they could to help us, and I've assured him that their presence is duly noted by the state, and that if we need them further, he invited me to give him a call and let him know what else they could do at the federal level. But we do have uh, some of our state officials here, and you will hear from one of them in just a few minutes. As you know, we have declared a state of emergency. Uh, we are trying to be as cautious as possible, but we want everyone to understand that this is a very serious situation which is developing. We uh, declared the area east of I-95 as a mandatory evacuation area. Uh, we also have declared the area to the east, uh, excuse me, to the west of that uh, as a voluntary evacuation area, but highly encouraged because of the information that we continue to receive about the nature and magnitude of this hurricane. As you know, we have uh, reversed the lanes on the uh, I-16 corridor, and having observed that myself just a few minutes ago, it appears that that is working very well to allow people to evacuate uh, out of this area on the interstate by traveling on both the north, excuse me, the west and the eastbound sections of I-16. That will go all the way to the Dublin area and then revert back to its normal pattern. We are uh, very Im favorably impressed with what your emergency management operations are doing. I have visited uh, both the county operation as well as the city emergency management operations, and they seem to be fully staffed and ready to go as the emergency descends upon us. Um, I'd like to call on uh, the mayor of Savannah, uh, Mr. Eddie DeLoach, uh, who would have a few comments, I'm sure, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for joining us today. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm here. First thing I want to do is thank the governor for taking the time to come down here, uh, recognize the situation, and take and make it uh, make things happen. I want to thank the delegation from the Senate and from the House to make that uh, will also help us in the coming days as we develop this. I do want to reiterate that it is important that the citizens understand that this is a major storm, that this is a situation that they cannot take lightly. We will have buses running until 12 o'clock tomorrow. We'll move people out of our community into higher ground. We will do that until 12 o'clock. Anyone that comes after 12 o'clock will have missed the boat. So make sure that you're there ahead of that because we have to take the responders, first responders, and give them an opportunity to get out of the town also. So at 12 o'clock, they will leave and they will, they've got six hours to take care of their family and get their sales out. So that is our, our first priority there. So make sure you're there by 12 o'clock. Thank each one of the citizens of Savannah, the way they've operated, the way they've acted. I want to thank the uh, city manager. I want to thank the county manager, also Al Scott, also the governor again for working with us so well and anything we can do at the city that will enable anybody to have a better move away from the community, let us know. We will take care of you, but it has to be by 12 o'clock tomorrow. Thank you. I want to thank Senator Ben Watson for uh, being here today and for accompanying us to the Emergency Management Operations Centers. Uh, he certainly has been on the spot and is willing to be a part of any solution that may be necessary. Thank you, uh, Senator. I appreciate you being here. I have with me also uh, Jim Butterworth, who is the uh, head of our Georgia <laughs> Emergency Management Agency, referred to as GEMA. Uh, he and his staff are working very closely with your local people, and they are doing a great job in making preparations for this. But he can answer some of the questions that are in more detail and I will ask him at this time to give you an overview of what he is informed about in terms of the imminence of this hurricane and well as well as uh, the possible impacts that will come from it and what we're doing to mitigate and to make sure that we have no loss of life and to also make sure the property damage is as slow as it possibly can be. 
Um, Jim, if you would, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. Uh, as the governor has mentioned earlier, uh, in accordance with the mandatory and the voluntary evacuations for coastal Georgia, we have also, uh, earlier in the week, we began the process of sheltering. We have over 3,500, at last update, opportunities for individuals to shelter well inland, away from any potential impact of the storm. I would encourage folks to go to our website, the Georgia Emergency Management Agency website, and seek that information. The data, the address, whatever they need is on that website. Go to that and do not hesitate to contact us in any method that they have necessary. We are monitoring social media continuously to make sure that they have the, the information necessary to, to ensure safe passage via I-10 or any other route, that, uh, or I-16, or any other route that may be necessary for them. We are here for the Chatham County officials. We are here for the city of Savannah officials to make sure that uh, they have the support that they need. The governor has directed us our number one role for the next 48 hours is to protect it, is to protect life and property in that order. That's our instruction and that's the team that we have put together. Certainly appreciate the opportunity to be here. Governor, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let me ask, ask, open it up for your questions if you have those that we might be able to respond to. Well, I would say to those that are in the areas where we have declared it a mandatory evacuation area that they should take our advice very seriously. And we're not going to go arrest somebody because they refuse to leave their home, but we have that made that designation and that label for a very uh, distinct purpose. Uh, we think that those are the areas that will be most severely impacted, and I would encourage them to take advantage of the opportunity to evacuate now ahead of the storm, and I hope that they will. Thank you, though, for the question. Well, first time I've had a hurricane on my watch. <laughs> uh, and we've been fortunate in Georgia in our coastal areas not to have a major hurricane uh, hit us like this one is supposedly going to hit us. So we don't need to be lackadaisical because of that. Uh, we made the declaration. We were cautious in the timing on our declarations. Uh, we started out with just the uh, original 13 counties, the coastal counties, as well as those that abutted against them. And then we have expanded that area to now some 30 counties in this general coastal area. Uh, we didn't do that just because we like to name those counties in an emergency declaration. We did it because the information we were receiving from the National Hurricane Center and from other uh, predicting uh, outlets that uh, these were the areas going to be most severely impacted by it. Can you talk about um, the National Guard? Nikki Haley called up the National Guard. They're not only helping the police patrol the roads, but they're also patrolling the neighborhoods. Um, when we drive through our streets here as media in the last half hour, a lot of people have not left. Um, people are worried about home safety. Could you talk to us about, I understand there's extra state police coming in, or are you calling up the National Guard? It's the safety, I think one of the issues here in Savannah, there's a concern about home safety yeah. that may be holding some of our residents back. Well, we already have uh, a contingent of the National Guard, about 45. They're primarily assisting in the evacuation routes at the present time. Uh, we have had uh, General Gerard, the head of the Georgia National Guard, he is on standby. He was uh, in a meeting that we had just before I left to come here this afternoon. Uh, there will be more National Guard that will be on, on standby to be called in as the occasion arises. Uh, we do not want anyone to feel jeopardized. But, by the same token, we want people to be responsible for themselves and the protection of their families. So, if they will heed the advice of our agencies that are in charge of dealing with these emergencies, I think they will all be much safer than if they choose to ignore it. But you're not calling up the National Guard for Glenn County or Camden? Or, they're going to have a little corps come in right north of Jacksonville? We will call them out as the need arises. They are on standby, ready to go, and uh, so we don't have them placed other than in the exit routes right now working with uh, our State Department of Transportation 
and with our GEMA officials and with local law enforcement uh, now. I am. Uh, we believe that uh, we made the declaration within the window that gave adequate time for people to evacuate. Uh, we did not want to do so unnecessarily. It is very disruptive for someone to have to pick up and leave uh, their homes, their businesses, etc. But by the same token, uh, we do think that the areas we have designated have been carefully selected and we think they are the ones that should take the greatest heed uh, to our warning. Uh, let me ask uh, as a follow-up to the question about the National Guard because the National Guard works very closely and really under the direction in these emergency situations of uh, GEMA. And so, uh, Jim, would you please elaborate also on that? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I do have a little background in the National Guard uh, and that business. The thing that I would add, in, uh, in addition to what the governor has already said, he has authorized up to 1,000 National Guard members uh, as the need arises. That conversation will take take place between the governor, governor's chief of staff, the adjutant general, and myself when that time comes. So I promise you, we have the resources that are necessary in that regard. Resources are forward deployed as necessary. Uh, we don't see, there would not be a need for Fort Stewart for, for regular Army individuals to be deployed. Uh, quite frankly, there is not a process in the federal government that would allow that. That's why we have the National Guard. That's why it is under the governor's purview. Can you speak to uh, what might What I would prefer to speak to is the timing of the storm. Um, tropical, force, tropical force winds are predicted beginning about noon or shortly thereafter tomorrow. Uh, certain emergency response vehicles will not be able to respond uh, to collect it in the timing of the storm and would probably, it is expected to, to continue for approximately 24 hours. So again, that's on the current track, current prediction, um, and that's the best I can speak to as far as a bridge closing itself. Governor. Uh, we are in very close contact with them uh, on a regular basis, both at the local level. Dennis Jones and I have had, uh, we are on speed dial of, of late, uh, and also the regional coordinator for the Federal Emergency Management Agency, Grace Jacek, she and I, have, we spoke five times yesterday, three times this morning. Uh, we are in regular contact. Their folks are in our operations center in Atlanta, and, uh, and we continually make sure that they understand our status and, and our position. As the governor alluded to, we haven't had a storm on the Georgia coast, as you all know, in 118 years. Uh, that's that's the best response, and we are uh, we are as well positioned. I am quite frank; I am comfortable with where we are and where the governor has positioned us. We have a major tour here. Uh, can you tell me what the precautions and protections are that are being taken? Well, we have the uh, the manager of the port. Come on up, Griff. Yeah, Griff Lynch, executive director of the Port Authority. The port uh, was shut down today at 3 o'clock, and as we speak, we're buttoning up some of the, the cranes and, and equipment out there, and, and the gates will be closed here very shortly. Uh, and so we feel very secure, as uh, Jim Butterworth had said and the governor alluded to, that we are well positioned. We've been working closely with the governor, his staff, and GEMA throughout the process, and SEMA, and uh, the team has done a great job getting ready for this. It's tough. It's tough to say until the storm passes by. We are uh, we are right now planning for reopening the facility on Monday morning, and until we see exactly what the storm does, we, we really can't answer that. Back back to the issue about the bridges. Uh, in the event of the storm surge, uh, there is a possibility that bridges may be in fact covered with water. In talking with our Department of Transportation head earlier today in a news conference that we had in Atlanta. He indicated that he has special inspectors 
on standby to inspect those bridges after the storm surge to be certain that they are, have not been damaged to the point that they would be dangerous as a result of the hurricane. So uh, everything that we can think of to be in anticipation of the conflict that may result uh, from the storm itself uh, is being taken care of and we think we have adequate people and resources. Now once again, a lot depends on the intensity of the hurricane when it actually hits our coast and it depends on the duration of it. It has been a slow moving hurricane. So we are hopeful that it won't linger around. This is not Southern hospitality we're inviting uh, to Matthew. We just as soon he leave us as soon as possible. And, uh, but we think that a lot of things are, are going to work in our favor as we can hopefully expect them to do in this very difficult time. But, well, let me thank you all for being here and uh, assure you that we stand ready to work with local authorities and county authorities and we all work together in this process. That's what makes it uh, safe for as many of our people as we could possibly provide safety for. Uh, the buses, um, I didn't mention one other thing about the, uh, the staging areas for uh, sites for people that are being transported out of the area. We have those sites that have already been opened and some of those include uh, our state parks that are available and we also have under under GEMA's direction uh, other facilities that uh, individuals can be bused to and be taken care of until the storm passes. Well thank you again for being here today. Uh, let's all pray for our state and for the people of our state so that hopefully we will come through this uh, having learned lessons but hopefully not having to repeat those lessons in the very near future. Good luck to everybody. Thank you.